Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday today. And so what we're going to do is we're going to at least start answering some of those questions. Now, when, when Jesus arose from the dead, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Uh, you may not realize this, but if you will look at what the disciples were preaching after Jesus arose from the dead, the main subject that they would cover would be Jesus conquering death. That was their main subject. So he's showing himself that he has risen from the dead. It says, being seen by them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, in the Western church today, you do not hear a lot about the kingdom. But it is what Jesus preached. His message was, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. It's available. It's now. What we have mostly in the Western church is how to get to heaven. But the kingdom of God is this. It's God getting heaven in you now. Jesus said, pray your kingdom come. Right? Not when you die, but right now. So Jesus is talking to them about the kingdom. And this is where he starts. He says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, notice he commands them, don't depart from Jerusalem, but you're going to wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. He said, you've heard about it from me. And uh, we'll look at that in just a little bit. But then he lets us know what is this promise of the Father. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. And then verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. And really, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is about your having power to demonstrate and enforce the kingdom of God. That's what it's about. So Jesus said that's what's going to happen when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when the promise of the Father comes. Now, You've heard me say this, but everything starts in Genesis. You know that, right? So we got to go to Genesis, get started. Genesis chapter 12, God shows up with Abraham. And he says, Abraham, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. All right, I'm going to make your name great. You'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So God promises him descendants. And he promises him that through him, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. So time passes and Abraham does not have this descendant. And so Abraham says to God, this is Genesis 15. He said, Lord God, how shall I know that I'm going to inherit it? How do I know you're going to do what you said you were going to do? And God said to him, verse 9, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought all of these to him, and he cut them in two down the middle and placed the pieces opposite each other. So what's going to happen, again, when God said, hey, bring me these, these animals, you and I might think, barbecue. This is going to be good. But what Abraham thought was covenant. This was the way a covenant was made. Now, most people today, the only covenant they ever enter into is a covenant of marriage. And how many remember when you got married that you made promises to each other? I'm going to do this. I'm going to be this to you. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do this to you. Well, this is what's happening here. Abraham is entering into a covenant relationship with God. So they take the animals and they're dividing them. And, and I've used this illustration before, but they put them on altars. And they've cut these animals in half. Can you imagine how big 
of a bloody mess this is. And they're going, this is part of the covenant relationship. So what happens, it says, as it came to pass, when the sun went down and it was dark. Right? Now they're making, they're making promises to each other. They're supposed to be walking in these pieces. Their feet are covered in blood. The bottoms of the robes are covered in blood. It went down and it was dark that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed through the pieces. And on the same day, the Lord God made a covenant with Abraham. So Abraham, the Bible says, has fallen asleep. And there is a smoking torch and a burning furnace that walk through these pieces. And what are they doing? They're talking to each other. And they are making promises to each other. That's what they're doing. They're making promises. This is really important. Now, in Galatians, the third chapter, it tells us more about this thing that we just looked at here over in Genesis. It says, And to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now, this is talking about right here, we just looked at in Genesis. And he does not say to seeds as of many, but as of one and to your seed who is Christ. So who walked through the pieces? Jesus was there walking through those pieces. And God the Father was there walking through those pieces. And they are making promises to each other. In this I say that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, that he should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise, by promise. Now remember Acts chapter 1, but wait for the promise of the Father. You say, when was that promise made? Right here. Right here in Genesis. This promise is made. He said, which you've heard of me. And we're going to look right in a minute where that, where that happened. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence or not many days from now. Now, look for a moment. We've got it right here on the screen. Galatians chapter 3. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it's written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, where did that blessing come from? Walking through the pieces. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So what is the promise? Well, in its, in its simplest form, it is the promise of the Spirit. But here's what it entails. It entails you becoming one in Christ. Because if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The, 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 the simplest way to say the promise is the Holy Spirit. In fact, when, the, when the, the Pharisees, the religious people of the day, come to John the Baptist, who is the forerunner of Jesus. He's preparing the way for Jesus. And they say, who are you? This is what he said. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he who comes after me is mightier than I. Who is we talking about? The seed, Jesus. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So when John the Baptist looks at what is going to happen in Jesus' ministry, he says, this is the number one thing that's going to happen to bring the kingdom. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Acts chapter 2, Peter preaches the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise. What promise? The promise of the Holy Spirit. It's for you and for your children and to all 
who are afar off, as many as the Lord your God will call. So that promise is for you. Those that were afar off, that's us. It's been 2,000 years, but the promise is for us. And notice when Peter preaches the first sermon, what does he say? He says, repent, get baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise. Again, all the way back to Genesis chapter 15. This is what God had in mind. Again, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it's written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. This is redemption. What's the purpose? That the blessing of Abraham. And again, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You caught that last part, through faith? How many of you realize God has done everything that he needs to do for redemption already? We don't need Jesus to come and die and shed his blood again so somebody can be saved. Because it's done. Now, the Holy Spirit has been given, but he is received through faith. Just like someone needs to receive Jesus and salvation through faith, we need to receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Jesus said, wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, in John chapter 20, in verse 19, it says this, The same day at evening, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be to you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And when he had said this, he said, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive, the, did they receive? Okay. Universal. But now, in Acts chapter 1, he says, but wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father, which you've heard of me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. So do they have the Holy Spirit? Yes. But Jesus still said, hey, the promise of the Father, there's more. There is more. And you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, notice, they're hiding in the upper room. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, Peter stands up in front of everybody and starts preaching. And he says, look, you crucified the Lord of glory. Well, he's the one who denied the Lord of glory. But you know what? It changed him into another man. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And, of course, in Romans chapter 8, it says this. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Every believer has the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. Every believer. And when Jesus had received the Holy Spirit to the disciples, they received the Holy Spirit. But there was still something more. There was still the promise of the Father, which, according to John the Baptist, was the reason for Jesus to show up. Besides redeeming you, it was to fulfill that promise. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is different from receiving salvation and being water baptized. It empowers believers for kingdom living. Here are some practical steps to help you live out your faith boldly and authentically. Number one, know the Holy Spirit is for everyone. Let go of trying to reach a certain spiritual level. God promised the Holy Spirit for all his children. Jesus fulfilled that promise starting with the disciples. This isn't just for special Christians, it's for you. Number two, it's all about power. The baptism in the Holy Spirit isn't just a feeling. It's about being equipped to demonstrate God's kingdom power right here and now. The Holy Spirit will empower you. Be open to opportunities to share your faith, pray for others, and step out of your comfort zone. 
Number three, it's received by faith. We can't earn this gift. Just as we receive Jesus through faith, we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit the same way. Number four, ask God. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, ask God for it, desire it, and expect it. Repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear God, you say in your word that the Holy Spirit is a good gift and that everyone who asks for the Holy Spirit receives it. I ask to be baptized in the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I thank you for filling me, for empowering my life to be a witness for you, and for giving me the gift of tongues. Now, just like Paul, I will pray with my understanding, and I will pray with the Spirit. I believe I receive right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Embrace the power of the Holy Spirit and become the unshakable, impactful believer God created you to be. Remember, you can always find a link to Pastor's Notes in the description. Also, if you're in need of prayer, be sure to leave us a comment or click on the prayer link below. Some people will say, well, you know, the Bible talks about there's just one baptism. Um, you know this. You, you always interpret Scripture with Scripture. Right? So in Hebrews chapter 6, it talks about the fundamental doctrines of Christianity. The foundation. And this is how, how verse, two says, that verse 2 starts. The doctrine of baptisms, multiple. So let me just talk to you about that for a minute. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, it says, By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Now, when the Bible talks about one baptism, this is what it's talking about. The Holy Spirit takes every believer, when they become a Christian, and puts them into the body of Christ, immerses them, baptizes them into the body of Christ. So again... For by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slave or free. So there's the, the, literally there is a baptism that is done by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit puts you into the body of Christ. Nobody was ever meant to be a Christian and be a Lone Ranger. You see, in fact, when Jesus taught us to pray, he didn't say, pray my father. He said, pray our father. Over 30 times in the New Testament, it talks about one another, one another. How many of you know you can't one another all by yourself at home? You literally, you cannot fulfill the scripture. You cannot li literally participate in the kingdom of God by yourself. Then there's water baptism. Of course, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said to his disciples, go, go out, preach to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Water baptism. And then there's spirit baptism. Now, it's interesting. The Spirit puts us into the body of Christ. The church baptizes us in water. But Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. That's what John the Baptist said. He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, how many know Jesus is the head of the church? And we're part of the church. And when we receive him, we receive him as Lord. Now, if there's something that he wants us to have, there's something he is doing, you know, some people look at their Bible and they think, man, if I had just been around when Jesus was here, when Jesus was, was preaching, when Jesus was praying for the sick, when Jesus was delivering, if I had just been here, do you realize Jesus has a present-day ministry? His ministry is not done, all right? He ever lives to make intercession for us, but he is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And for somebody to think, if I had been ar around back in the days of, of those 12 disciples, I would have followed Jesus and then reject what Jesus is doing today is ludicrous. I thought that would go over about like that. <laughs> All right. So we're baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. We're baptized in water by the church. But we're baptized in the Holy Spirit by the Lord Jesus himself. So it's into one body that gets you to heaven. But the spirit does get you to heaven. When you're baptized in water, it's to bring deliverance from the world so that you can manifest the kingdom. And then the spirit, we are baptized in the spirit by the Lord Jesus, all right, to have power to be a witness and demonstrate the kingdom of God. So let's quickly go over here to Acts chapter 8. Acts 8. 
the persecution has begun against the church. And it says that Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Philip uh, was one of the original deacons in the church. Now, by the time we get into Acts chapter 21, he's called an evangelist. And you'll see why right here. So Philip went down to the city of Samaria. He preached Christ to them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed of them. And many taken with palsy and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. So he's preaching the kingdom. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now, Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. These people are saved. Verse 14. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For he, as yet, was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So he had fallen upon how many of them? None. Were they saved? Yes, they were. Was the Holy Spirit living on the inside? Yes, he was. But they had not yet received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. What I want you to catch here is this experience was subsequent to salvation. Just like it was with the disciples. Jesus had received the Holy Spirit. But then he says, you wait in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father, the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So here's the question is so often we think, well, I got saved. I received the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. But the question is, did you receive everything God had for you? Because the disciples hadn't, and the believers here at Samaria hadn't. The Holy Spirit had not yet fallen upon any of them. Only they'd been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When they laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. So as soon as the apostles in Jerusalem hear that Samaria has has received the word of God, they believe, they're baptized, they send them, Peter and John, to pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. They did not expect the baptism in the Holy Spirit to be automatic just because you were saved. They didn't expect that. I think it's interesting that Jesus is teaching about the Holy Spirit. He says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him, to them that ask him. Uh, Unfortunately, in the church, it's like we pray for the Holy Spirit. And then basically we say, sit down in the back, behave yourself, and be quiet. I want to tell you what, what, when the Holy Spirit shows up, he did not show up to sit in the back and be quiet. He's here. Literally, to bring power to be a witness of what Jesus has done for you and for me. Now, the Apostle Paul is on his way to persecute Christians. Jesus appears to him in a vision, knocks him off his donkey. Jesus talks to the Apostle Paul. Paul gets saved. But then Jesus appears in a vision to Ananias and says, Ananias, I want you to go and I want you to pray for this guy, this guy Saul who later becomes Paul. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. Was he converted when he had a conversation with Jesus? Absolutely. Absolutely. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? So he was converted, but yet Ananias came down, laid hands on him that he might receive. Repent, Peter says, Acts 2, 38, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you will receive. 
One more example and then a story. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said to them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Now, that is a great question to ask every believer. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Because when you believe, automatically, the Holy Spirit took you and put you into the body of Christ, and he is living on the inside of you. But there is a difference between having a drink of water and going swimming. And what the Holy Spirit wants to do, Jesus wants to immerse you, baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said to him, we haven't even so much as heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, well, then how were you baptized? Well, when you get baptized, how many of you know you ought to at least know the Holy Spirit exists because you get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Well, they said, well, we were just baptized in John's baptism. So then Paul explains to them, all right? Then he literally, he takes and he lays, but water baptizes them, and then he lays his hands on them, all right? And the Holy Ghost came upon them, verse 6, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They spake with tongues and prophesied. And again, Acts 2, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, uh, next week, we're going to deal with the, the, the tongue stuff. And uh, I don't want to say too much about that today. I'm going to, to probably do 10 blessings that you receive through speaking in tongues next week. But let me just tell you a little story. Let me close with this. In 1980, Jeannie and I are, are living in an Indian center in Mexico with the Otomi Indians. And about 80 miles away, there's this church in Tepeyapulco, Hidalgo. And they invite me to come Pentecost Sunday morning to do what they call the upper room service. So I remember got up early, drove the 80 miles, got over there. Uh, Pastor Samuel, uh, some of you've been there. Pastor Merle, you know, you know Pastor Samuel quite well. Uh, I, I meet with him before service and we go into the service. Now, when we get there, the service is already going. And, and you have to realize this is a Pentecostal church. Right? This is not neo They are like Pentecostal. You say, how could you tell? Well, first of all, there's a main aisle, pews on each side, women on the right, men on the left, never shall the two cross in church. Never. Uh, secondly, all the ladies have to have a head covering on. Now, 1 Corinthians says that your hair is given to you for a covering, but they made you have something on your head. You had to have like this, this, this cloth on your head. And all the ladies wore dresses because the sign on the outside of church said, no women with pants allowed. And at that time, it was pretty risque in that area for a woman to wear pants. So we get in church and the worship's going on. We're sitting up on the platform, pastor and myself and some of the elders of the church. And the church is packed and they are going full steam. And I said, it's packed. And I notice as I'm up on the platform, I notice a man come in the back and a woman following. him. Now, this is the story that she told me later. She says, I'm a hairdresser. She says, and I was on my, I'm on my way to work, and I was at the bus stop. She said, and, and I don't know what happened to me. He said, but I just, I just started talking to God. And I said, God, my life is a mess. I says, I don't know what to do. God, just show me what to do. I will do anything. Show me what I need to do. My family's a left. My life is a mess. And she looks over, and the man right next to her has a black book, and on the side, Backside on the binding part, it's the Santa Biblia, Holy Bible. And she just said, I don't know where he's going, but I'm going with him. So literally, his bus comes by, he waves the bus down, he climbs on, she climbs on with him, sits right by him. They go about eight, ten blocks, he pulls the cord, you know, so the bus stops at the next corner, she gets off with him. He walks about uh, a block down, turns left, and then turned left again, went through the back doors of the church. I saw him walk in. I saw her about 15 feet behind him. She's following him in. Now, up to that point, everything seems normal, okay? But then I look, 
she has pants on. She does not have a head covering on. So I like, I know right away, this is a sinner woman. I mean, she's got pants on in church and no head covering. And then to make it worse, right, that guy squeezes in on the men's side and she squeezed in right next to him. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Lightning from heaven. Who knows what's going to happen? And I mean it, she, she sits down 30 seconds, and she's just like, I mean, there are like streams of tears pouring out of her eyes. I mean, she senses the presence of the Holy Spirit. Well, they, they turned me loose, and I, I preach for, I don't know, an hour or so. And again, this is a Pentecostal church, and I'm supposed to pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I said... I said, now, if you're here this morning and would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, I'd like you to come forward. I expected six people. I'll tell you what happened. It was like, woof, at least 120 people showed up. I mean, the whole altar is absolutely packed, and this lady's there. Now, that presents a problem because you know she's a sinner, right? Got the pants on, no head covering. And you can't receive the Holy Spirit if you're not saved. So what I did, crafty fellow that I am, (laughs) I led everybody in the center prayer to receive Jesus. And then I led them in a prayer to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then I went down on the right side. It's the lady side. Do you remember that? And I start praying for people to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I remember the first lady I came to, I just said, I'm going to lay hands on you. And when I do, I said, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. I said, and you can begin to speak with tongues. Well, I, I lay hands on her. Her hands shoot up in the air, and she starts shouting in tongues. Now, I'm not recommending this. You understand that? I'm just telling you what happened. This is a report. And when she did, every other person, it seemed like, in that church jumped to their feet, threw their hands up in the air, and started praying in tongues as loud as they could. Now, you said, well, it sounds confusing. It was. But let me just say, 1 Corinthians 14 says, He who prays in an unknown tongue speaks to men, not to God. So they're talking to God. They're they're praying, but not necessarily in decent and in order. So I go to the next lady, and I yell. I say, I'm going to lay hands on you. You say, why? Because this place sounds like Niagara Falls. And I pray for the next lady and the next lady and the next lady. And in the meantime, I send all the elders down on the guy's side. And after I'd prayed for, I don't know, six, eight, ten people, however many it was, I came up on the platform to just kind of look things over. And one of the elders comes up, and, and he's crying. And he says, I am praying for people to receive the Holy Spirit. And they are receiving. And I said, good, get back at it. And he says, you don't understand. He said, uh, I, I've been a Christian for over 30 years, and I've never received the Holy Spirit. And he's praying for people to receive the Holy Spirit. So you know what that tells me? He's got nothing to do with it. John the Baptist said, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus. But I knew his problem right away. He was trying to be good enough to receive the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a gift, right? Not something you earn, someone you earn, but the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I said to him, I said, I've got a word for you. Now, he thought God had, like, spoken from heaven. Well, he did, kind of. The word I had was from Luke chapter 11, everyone that asked receives. So I said, we're going to pray, and you just ask to receive the Holy Spirit. I'm going to lay hands on you, and you're going to receive. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah. So he prays. I don't even get to lay hands on him. His hands are shoot up, and he starts speaking in other tongues. Now, Remember the lady with the pants? You haven't forgot her, have you? Literally, we lay hands on her. She receives the Holy Spirit. She's been saved like four minutes. She receives the Holy Spirit. But she wasn't trying to earn the Holy Spirit. She was just receiving the Holy Spirit. My friend, the elder, he'd been working to receive the Holy Spirit for 30 years. But the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's not something that you, someone you earn, an experience you earn. It is the promise of the Father. Let me just say this. This is something that Jesus wants for you. 
This is something I want for you. You say, why? Because it has made huge difference in my life. Huge difference in my life. I, I think uh, trying to, to, to bring and demonstrate the kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Say The most important thing any person can ever know is that they're forgiven, they're right with God, and they're on their way to heaven. Yet so many people do not know. They just hope that they're right with God. Jesus said this. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. So Jesus is saying, all my good works can't make me right with God. All the good things you can do cannot make you right with God. He's saying he's the only one because he's the only one who lived a sinless life, went to the cross, shed his blood as payment for your sin, died, rose again victorious over death, sin, and the devil. So the Bible says that whosoever, that's you, that's me, will call on the name of the Lord. That's what we're going to do the way the Bible shows us to. And then it says, we'll be saved. You'll be forgiven, right with God, on your way to heaven. So I'm going to ask you, if you don't know where you stand with God, you're not right with God, would you pray this prayer with me? Pray this out loud from your heart. And if you will pray this prayer and believe the things that we're saying in this prayer, when we say amen, you're going to be right with God. Say, oh God, I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe his blood paid for my sins. And I believe that he rose again victorious over death, over sin, and over the devil. And I give him all of my heart and all of my life. I hold nothing back. I receive Jesus as my king, as my Lord, and my only Savior. And I thank you. You've heard my prayer. My past is gone. I'm a part of your kingdom today and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and meant that prayer, God heard that prayer. You're forgiven. You're right with God. You're on your way to heaven. And I wrote a book to help you keep on growing spiritually. All the information to get this book is right on your screen. I want to thank you for listening to this message and just say, God bless you and give you the desires of your heart, the things that God wants in your heart. May God put them there. If you just prayed that prayer with Pastor Dwayne, congratulations. You're on the path to one of the best decisions of your life. Need more info? Our team at walkingbyfaith.tv is ready to answer your questions. To get your free copy of Pastor's book, Your New Life, click on the link in the description or download the Walking by Faith app. Packed with practical advice, this book is your guide to living a life full of faith. Claim your free copy now. Instead of just witnessing the miracle, become the miracle. Partner with Walking by Faith and ignite the spark of hope in someone's life. Let your generosity be a beacon that guides them through the darkness. To give, click on the giving link in the description below. Thank you for your unwavering support in spreading the message of hope and healing through God's word. Do you desire a deeper relationship with God? Salvation is the first step, but it's just the beginning of an incredible journey. In Baptism in the Holy Spirit, you'll discover how God's greatest desire is to transform you into a powerful vessel of his love. To purchase a hard copy or get a free digital copy today, go to walkingbyfaith.tv slash WBF store. Receiving the Holy Spirit is a gift from God, not something earned through merit or works. The Holy Spirit empowers us as believers to manifest our spiritual gifts and engage in dynamic kingdom living. If you would like someone to pray with you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, click the prayer link below or simply leave a comment to connect with our prayer team. May your week ahead be filled with joy, strength, and the peace that surpasses all understanding. See you again soon.